Okay, though, so it's week six, and uh, if you review week two, you'll see that we had some activities that you should be doing to strengthen the quads, get used to carrying a backpack, um, adjustable straps. But we can take it a little bit more aggressive with um, trying steps. I think um, if you have your pack and you're used to lifting up the knees, they'll give you a little more resistance. Also help you train the flexors of the hip, which sometimes uh, will get really spent fast. Now if we scramble, we do a occasional um, scree or a loose uh, rock attack. It's fine, but if we have a stretch of trail that's constantly uphill and with stuff like this, it's going to need a little bit more endurance. So that's why it's good to carry the packs and then have some kind of incline. Here we have a downward you have an ascent and a descent. Get your legs ready for both. Because there are two different muscle groups that are used for each of the movements. <coughs> For the most part, we'll be going uphill, and then halfway through, well, downhill. But still, start getting cramps halfway through the ascent. It'll be tough, and we'll have to slow down the whole group to manage the descent. So, pacing yourself is important, in addition to getting used to your equipment. This, especially in, during times of fatigue, is when um, walking sticks are important. This is actually my walking stick. Or uh, ankle support can be adjusted. So on the way back, we'll be lightening the load, so it'll be a little easier with ca uh, backpack carry. But for Again, for going uphill, it's important to test out equipment, test out your legs, and have some form of endurance. If you can't get to a place with steps, um, an incline's fine, or find a building with five floors, that should be good enough. If you can't get to an outdoor place that has uh, steps, then you can train your hips into bringing your knees up by getting into a parking structure, or in this case, a hospital. The idea is you want to bring your knees up to a high hip. Uh, usually that causes a lot of flexion to the hip flexors. And also it starts to turn on the quad muscle. You get used to bringing your feet up. This is an unusual reaction or unusual movement for people to go through. So it's nice to be able to train this way. Especially with this kind of weight. When you have a backpack on, it changes your center of gravity. So you can't necessarily stand like this. You have to be lurched over a little bit. So our red here asking the hips to be always contracted. The hips, the psoas muscle, are flexors. <clears throat> if you've ever talked to anybody that has a problem with um, hip pain or groin pain, um, they'll tell you what they don't like to do is to stretch it out. It's because it's so spasmed up. So um, again, try to get some kind of uh, exercise routine going, whether it's outside like a swallow cliff stairs or in a building like this. If you can get a backpack, roughly 30 pounds, it'll give you enough resistance and a good pair of shoes. So the steps in a fire well are a little bit more narrow than what you might find with man-made steps on a trail. So either way, if you're used to doing high knee kicks, um, that is what we have to train for. If you're not um, well versed with that kind of walking, again, it's a little bit of a challenge when you first start to do it. And you'll cramp up and we won't be able to keep up with everybody else or we'll have to take constant breaks 
So a six hour hike can turn into a 10 hour hike if we always have to take a break. Certainly that's what your partner's for as far as a hiking buddy. And this is the cool part because most uh, trails are not that aggressive. If they're man-made, then they have to be, uh, and they're uh, chronically stepped on or used by the general public. It's probably gonna be relatively friendly except for certain short bursts. It's kind of those short bursts that you have to temper your training. So if you can go here in a stairwell, or if you just have an incline, like a big hill, when you try to train uh, with elevation and incline and resistance and a backpack, you should probably do it at least once a week, especially when we hit the halfway point in the 12 weeks to change. Um, so it's not always um, an opportunity to get to an incline like this at Mount Hoy or to get to the steps. So I will have to chime it, time it properly. I'll try to do at least once a week. And as far as how long, again, I think it's, since most trails don't really get you to the point of exhaustion, usually a trail going up to a certain altitude will have a very tactical point and then an easy one. Tactical rise, easy one. So you're scrambling every once in a while with frequent breaks, but um, I'd say if you can do 15, 10 to 15 minutes of pretty decent incline, uh, straightforward, then I think that would get your cardio to the point where you're tolerant to anything that we could, we'll probably encounter. Um, you, we'll talk next week about the specifics of training, how to get into running mode in addition to a little bit of resistance and a little bit of uh, cardio together in addition to flexibility. But for now, this is perfect. Usually if we get to go up, there's gonna be a going down part. The going down part, it's nice to take advantage of gravity, but that's when I say open up the gate a little bit and then see what you can do with big steps. Again, it stretches out certain muscles. You'll see that when you're carrying a backpack, your posture will be a little off. So going down, we try to open up the gate. This psoas muscle right here is one that notoriously, if you injure it or overuse it, causes a lot of groin pain. And it can be transferred to the back as low back pain or into the hamstring and inner thigh. So you really gotta work on not only strengthening that and working on endurance, but also working on flexibility. There's something called a pigeon pose in yoga that is uh, such a tough pose, but when you get it opened and your thigh just relaxes, it's very uh, emotionally releasing. So um, I think I talked about it in my IT band flexibility tutorial, but look it up, pigeon pose. Anyway, that's what I would do. I plan for at least one time a week at about a five to 10 minute speed burst up and down mountaintop or a hill incline like this. But you gotta get a little bit of endurance up so the body can tolerate the scrambles. So in most trails, there are only short stretches of time where you have to scramble up and you have to put a lot of work into your uh, load. So for the most part, it should be an easy ascent. I'm gonna pick something that's probably six miles up and back with an incline. You have no choice, gonna hit an incline. But again, with training, doing these things, the down phase, when you're heading down, you're using different muscles, you're stretching, you're gaining composure, and you're slowing down your breath. Going up, you're gonna to get toasted and get hot. So if you can get training in, so at least your heart is ready for it, you're gonna to have to know how much you can push to the point where you start to begin sweating and also how long it takes to have the heart rate cool down slow down just remember this the faster the heart rate the more the heat that you're making and the more the heat you're making or generating especially if you're wearing a say a waterproof jacket you're going to keep all that heat you're going to sweat with the sweat it's going to be an uncomfortable hike because it always changes around your evaporation you get cooler 
doesn't make it good. So especially if it's the first day hike, we got three more hikes to do after that, I need you healthy. So get the training, get your pack ready, know what your resistance, what your tolerance is. And then you can always, um, while you're doing the ascent, you can always cool down with water. But uh, again, it, it, the best thing is to have some kind of training so you're used to it, so that you don't just introduce yourself to this kind of activity on the mountaintop.